The appearance of downtown Roseburg has changed a great deal over the last 50 years, much of it as a result of the blast. Immediately behind where you're standing now was the former location of Bill Stock Motors, the local Plymouth DeSoto car dealership. Across Oak Street, where the car lot is today, was the site of the Coca-Cola bottling plant, and Caddy Corner from where you're standing was the Gerritsen Building Supply Company building. Gerritsen's was a welcome sight to George Rutherford as he drove into Roseburg on Thursday evening, August 6, 1959. Rutherford had been on the road all day, and he was hot and tired as he pulled his delivery truck onto Pine Street around 8.30 that night. Driving for the Pacific Powder Company out of Tonino, Washington, Rutherford had been on the road since mid-afternoon and was ready to call it a day. Inside the back of the delivery van sat his dangerous cargo, 9,000 pounds of blasting agent and 4,000 pounds of dynamite, a total of six and a half tons of explosives. It was too late to make deliveries, and even though his company had received warnings about leaving explosive trucks unattended, Rutherford made arrangements to park next to Gerritsen's warehouse on Pine Street. He walked three blocks to the Umpqua Hotel and arranged for a room. He would make a final check of his truck at 11 that night. Satisfied that everything was okay, Rutherford returned to the hotel to get some sleep. At that time, the Oak Street Bridge across the South Umpqua River was the primary connection between downtown Roseburg and the west side of town. Oak Street, in front of you, was a busy two-way avenue back in 1959, and it was the route Dennis Tandy drove that night on his way back home from work. It was around 1 a.m. Friday morning when the 17-year-old and his pregnant wife Marilyn had just crossed over the South Umpqua River and passed by Garrettson's. Dennis had just finished his shift at a local lumber mill. He had driven to his mother-in-law's house to pick up his wife, and the two were headed home when they noticed a fire in a row of trash cans next to the warehouse. Dennis hopped out of the car and attempted to stifle the blaze by moving some of the flaming trash cans into the street. He yelled to Marilyn to find a phone and call the fire department. Marilyn drove the car to a nearby service station to report the fire, then returned to find her husband, Dennis. It was 1.05 a.m. Assistant Fire Chief Roy McFarland was on duty that night, just a few blocks away at Roseburg's main station downtown. He and Fireman Lyle Westcott responded to the blaze at Garrettson's, arriving on the scene at 1.07 a.m. They immediately pulled hoses from the fire truck, hooked them to a hydrant, and began to combat the blaze. As the fire grew in size and intensity, Marilyn Tandy pleaded with her husband to leave. No, he replied, but you get back to the car. She slowly retreated to their car as Dennis grabbed an ax and turned his attention to a nearby truck loaded with sawdust and wood scraps that he decided should be moved. Amidst all the commotion, no one seemed to notice the red truck with the explosive sign parked next to the flaming building. The heat from the blaze had become so intense that it was becoming increasingly difficult for the firefighters to maintain their position. Lyle Westcott, using a parked truck as a shield from the heat, a truck loaded with six and a half tons of explosives, retreated from the blaze only to discover that his hands and chest were becoming seriously burned despite his protective clothing. I was getting awfully warm and I turned my helmet around to try to protect my face and I, down on the hose and I looked down and I saw that my skin was falling off my arms and hands there. A Roseburg police officer responding to the blaze loaded Westcott into a nearby car and took him to the hospital for medical attention. 20-year-old Richard Knight, a service station attendant working the late shift a block away, had received firefighter training in the Air Force. Upon catching sight of the blaze, Knight ran to the scene to help combat the fire. Marilyn Tandy watched from her car, parked about 100 feet from the blaze, as her husband continued in his efforts to break into the other truck with his ax. It was about this time that someone noticed the parked truck posted with explosive signs. It was 1.14 a.m., just nine short minutes after the alarm had been called in, when someone, perhaps McFarland, yelled to the others fighting the fire, Get the hell out of here! That truck's gonna blow! But by then, the fuse had been lit, and it was too late. 